your might. Holy Spirit, you are God. Holy Spirit, you are one mighty. Holy Spirit, you are here. You are the healer. You are the revealer. You are the helper. You are the mighty God. You are the winner. You are in charge. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Wherever the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. Holy Spirit, have your way. We give you praise. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my God. Jehovah Nike. One person, one person, say in the name of Jesus, I speak the word of God 
into your life by the power that is in the name of Jesus you are rising high your star will shine what if I hold you down over the years give way no evil shall be for you no plague shall come near your dwelling places I command you go forward shine manifest the power of God you will prosper you will prosper this shall be well with you you will sing a new song you shall be celebrated shout hallelujah under spell, the spell shall be destroyed. Father, we just want to give you all the praise. You are irreplaceable. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the fire that is here. Thank you, O oh God Almighty, for breaking every limits. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody here. Life has been uncertain for you. What you're doing right now, you're just doing it. You don't even know where you're going. The Holy Spirit has me to tell you that from today, everything will be clear. Yeah. Everything will be clear. Thank you, Jesus. There is somebody here, all you need is a sponsor. I don't know the meaning of what that means. You need somebody to just sponsor you for something. The vision is clear, everything. You just need a sponsor. The Lord says, I should tell you this year, you only need one sponsor, sponsor but there will be four of them. Yes. You have to receive that if that is you. There's somebody here in your family, this is the trend. Nobody ever get married. They have children, but they don't get married. 
the Lord says you will be the only exemption that you will break that curse thank you Jesus there's somebody right now your parent is presently in a very very terrible physical state and I think there's something that looks like maybe uh, they say terminal disease for either of your parents some people are making noise there if they can reverence the Holy Spirit that would be great the Lord says I should tell you that terminal disease is terminated right now thank you Holy Spirit is somebody here that you're saying am I really called into ministry will God ever use me the Lord said he has started using you from tonight clap your hands and give God praise there is somebody in this place you, you wake up one morning and you saw a mark on your body and the mark is big you saw that mark on your body and you cannot explain who put it there the Lord said if you will take time if you check it now the mark has disappeared let's clap our hands let's clap our hands Father we give you all the praise now um, our meeting continues tomorrow you believe in that by the mercy and grace of God so I, I want you to be there especially for those that I want to anoint tomorrow is anointing service for all of us during the breakthrough time I beg you be anointed I'm going to be talking a little bit about that be anointed you got to be anointed you have to be anointed are you hearing what I'm saying you have to be anointed please I'm begging you the anointing does not literally mean that you put oil on your head we're going to apply oil but the only people you can touch are the anointed touch not the anointed you have to be an anointed student anointed CEO, anointed nurse, anointed doctor, anointed singer. You can't be ordinary. You've got to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. It's very important. Let's make sure that we keep through that if you can and God will bless you. Amen. Now we're talking about refiner's fire. <clears throat> and so everything has to be quiet. And my brother needs to hold on. And I still need you. Now, <clears throat> refiner's fire and this is part three. Is it part three? We had some time in the, in, the, in the afternoon. We're talking about prayer. And we're very grateful for that beautiful time. Can we appreciate God? Yeah. All right. There are five processes that happens during refining or when you apply uh, a process of refine. You want to refine a crude oil. That's our case study. We're looking at crude oil. Because without God refining us, the price tag placed on us will be very meager or minor. Just be something tiny. Because, like, we will not be useless in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so for God to really, for, for, for the price tag upon our life, which of course nobody can really uh, buy because we are purchased by the blood of Jesus, for that potential, because now you're blocked. But, now listen, listen. God wants to buy you from the market score of the devil. And the devil says, and God says, how much? I mean, I mean, the devil says, I don't want money, billions of dollars to buy this person. I want your blood, the blood of God. God says, I so much love these people, I will die for them. And I will pay my precious blood. So the price tag that God's paid over your life is his blood. How can God redeem you by his blood and you are low in life? How can God redeem you by his blood and you are begging for bread? How can God redeem you with his blood, beg your pardon, and you are jobless? So that's what we're discussing, that there is a treasure in you that you need to let it manifest. Did you get what I'm saying? So that's why you have to pass through this refining. So we are taking the case point of the crude oil. The price for crude oil is so cheap that they buy it from the nations and by the time they sell it back because they don't have refinery they sell it back at a very expensive price. So it's like they are really abusing the one that has the oil because they don't have anything to refine it. And one of the five processes of refining is what we call what? The first one is what? 
preparation. So we're preparing the crude oil. The second process tonight is separation. Separation. Let's read Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Let's read Romans the first chapter and the first verse. Very brief tonight. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. I want everybody to be ready. Let's go. Separated unto the gospel. Let's look at all the qualifications. Paul, a servant of of Jesus Christ, he mentioned his name. Call to be an apostle. My brother, should, oh, oh, please hold on the keyboard first, please. Oh, call to be an apostle, but separated unto the gospel. The gospel has separated me. Those chapters in the Bible got me separated. So the separated one cannot be separated from the love of Christ. I'm going to define separation. Look at it. Romans chapter 3 verse 35. If you are separated unto God, nothing can separate you from God. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Romans 8 35. Look at what it says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, that sickness that want to separate you, that disease, that shame, that pain, that fear, that mockery, let God's fire destroy it right now. Oh, sir, because I'm separated unto God. This is the act of the Holy Spirit. Now, Acts chapter 13 verse 2, look at what it says. The process of separation. As they minister to the Lord, like we are doing tonight, singing, rejoicing, and fasted. So, for you to be separated, there must be an act of prayer, act of ministering to the Lord in worship, and the heart of what? Fasting. Hey, listen to me. I'm talking about God who wants to refine you. You don't know how to fast. There are things that won't let you go. Place a pause on that. Let's go to Matthew 17 verse 21. There are demons. They will never let you go. Except you know how to fast. And what? You are too young to be eating every day. You're too young to be eating every day. How beat this kind of demon cannot leave you but by prayer. And what? I was doing research in genetics, planting some whatever it is and watching over it, all the uh, little uh, bean and uh, corn and all that, trying to, you know, crossbreed in a sun, in a greenhouse. How many people know what is a greenhouse? You know a greenhouse? Controlled environment and all that. And then I was going through fasting, no food, no water. Exam time. Because we already fixed it. I don't know when it's going to be exam. So the thing just tally. No food, no water. The third day, start walking. Like, because you've been on that thing since. No food, no water. Why am I fasting? No problem. I don't need money. I don't need anything. I was fasting for days like this. Just for me to be fit with God. Because I'm separated unto God. Did you get what I'm saying? No, 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 no. You got to get. Did you get what I'm saying? Because one little demon can destroy everything you gather for the last 28 years of your life on the road on an accident and just kill you. One tiny demon like this, like a roach, can destroy your seven years of marriage, like we have today. One tiny sickness can rob you off and eliminate your life. And they will say, well, terminal disease, after a brief illness, he died. You must know how to not just sing, not just pray, but to top it up with what? Fasting. Clap your hands and give God praise. You got to give God praise. 
That's just what it is. It's what it is, man. That's just what it is. And in this part of the world, we have eliminated and erased the correct art of fasting. We don't fast anymore. And even when we fast, we don't pray. You're going to know how to fast, young ladies. You don't want to give birth to an Absalom that's going to stab your family and kill you. You've got to fast. You don't want to nurse a Jezebel. You've got to fast and pray. I think that's enough. Did you get what I'm saying? Now look at what happened in Acts chapter 13 verse 1, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. The Holy Ghost said, what? Separate. Let me tell you something, man. If you are not going through the process of separation, you don't have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, and it cannot change. The Holy Ghost can never change. Is this separating people today? So, from all of us, there are people God is separating unto himself. Not for man, but to himself. Separate me. I wouldn't like God not to call my name. I don't just like God to call. We are a lot of people there. Look at how many people are there in verse 1. Look at all of us. You know, look at how many people are there. Now, they were in the church that was an Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers. As what? Let's mention their name. What's the first name? Second name. What was he called? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, there's always a problem when we call that. What's the problem? The pronoun what? I'm from Africa. You call it Niger. But we don't call it Niger. What do we call it from Africa? Are you from Africa? So you can't teach me how we call it. You call it what? Niger. What do we call it? That's what we call it. You know we call it nigger. No, that's what we call it. You call it what? We call it what? And it's always a problem because anytime I say nigger, people say, no, don't say that. Simeon that was called Okay, let's go. And Lucius of Cyrene, and, and that's what we call it. I'm just telling you what's what we call it. As Nije, Niga, something like that, you know. Yeah. Lucius of Cyrene and Manahin, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. Look at how many people are there. And look at how many people are separated. It does not matter how many people in this room. God wants to separate some people. I want to be one of them. It is separation unto God. Separation. Look at it. Now, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Verse 2, please. Separate me. Why can't God mention your name, your name, your name? Separate me, Holy Ghost. Separate unto Holy Ghost. Not separate unto Methodist Church. Not separate unto Baptist Church. Not separate unto Anglican Church. Separate unto who? God bless that person that is clapping tonight. It's a night of clapping. <laughs> separate. It's there. Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein I have called them. Separation. So separation is, an, is the action of the state of moving or being moved apart. Separation means disengagement. It can mean dissolution. It can mean divorce. Or, no, sorry, it can mean divorce. It doesn't mean divorce like you're divorced from your family or from your spouse. It means you're divorced from some habit, attitude, or from some people. It means estrangement. It means partition. It means split. It means breakup. It means cutting up. It means department like departmentalizing. It means deterge, it means disseverance, it means distinguish, it means disunite. Separation from the world, separation from yourself, separation from the carnal ones, separation unto God. Separation, we start from separation from the world. You're born again. You go, after being born again, you start to separate, you, you, you go out into separation from yourself because you are three parts. How many parts are you? You're a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. So when you separate your spirit from your soul and body, you can know when is the Holy Spirit or when is a demon spirit. 
Did you get what I'm saying? Holy Spirit is in your spirit. So you are not fleshly ruled. You are spirit ruled. You know when it's flesh. You know when it's spirit. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you know when the flesh is ruling you and when the Holy Spirit is taking control of your life. Separation. You can separate yourself from your friends because majority of your friends are carnal. They are carnal. They are Christians, but they are sinful. Did you get what I'm saying? No, it seems you don't, you don't get what I'm saying. Did you get what I'm saying? They, they, they are Christians, but they are what? Sinful. They sin. Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of what? The ungodly. So you are blessed. You don't need anybody to say, are you blessed? If you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you are automatically what? Blessed. You're just blessed. It's there. Look at you. You're blessed. You're a blessed person. You don't, you don't stand in the way of sinners. You don't sit in the seat of the scornful. You're blessed. I say you are blessed. Amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. You're blessed. You're blessed. So we need to learn to separate. And we're not preaching that you don't talk to people. You know, you, 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 you're kind of uh, living aloof. You, no, no, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that don't let what is in the world enter you, but what is in you should enter the world. Christ in you shall enter the world. In Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 2, look at what it says. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. Now, the question is, what are we separated from? Tonight, Somebody will be separated from anything called sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Separated from what? One, we must be separated from familiar things. Things that everybody does. Things that everybody are doing. Everybody drink. I call as a Christian, I will be the only one not doing it. Refiner's fire has started. Oh, I say you can clap tonight. It has started. Everybody, every Christian that I know tell lies. I will be the only one not telling lies. Every member of my family have anger problem, I will be the only one separated. Genesis chapter 13 verse 9. Look at it. Lot was going together with Abraham and a time came when both of them were fighting. The artsman of Lot and the artsman of Abraham. And look at the suggestion of Abraham. Genesis chapter 13 verse 9. It's not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I'll go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right, then I'll go to the left. Separate yourself. Abraham was separated from his, um, his niece. Uh, sorry, his nephew. She said, no, 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 I, I can't go with you, Lot. Because Lot is going to really end up going to Sodom and Gomorrah. And when he got to Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what happened there? He married there. He, become a, he became an elder there. And then, you know, he, you know, he, he, you know and he gave birth to two daughters. And when the two daughters were married, they were still virgin. You know the story, do you? I mean, you are married, but you're still a what? It's a, something's wrong somewhere. I, they don't like to talk to, they don't like to have dealings with men, though they are married. And they were still what? I showed you that before. We don't need to go through that. They were married, but they were what? You can't be a girl, you're married, and you're still a what? You know, that's the time to terminate the virginity. But they were virgin. They were virgin. And how do we know? When they left Sodom, something came to them, which they learned from Sodom. They said, we, we are here with our father. We don't have children. What should we do? 
Why can't we got our father drunk? Huh? You know the story? And then let's have sex with our father. And they did. They had sex with their father, their dad. Just one night. Produced the first child. The second daughter had sex with the father. He produced a child. And they end up, ended up becoming the enemy of Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree, may you be separated unto God tonight. Yeah. It's there. It's there. Thank you so much. They made their father drink wine that night. So some of you that you are drunkards. A lady came to meet me one time and say, excuse me, daddy. I say, well, can you pray for my ch child? I said, oh, no problem. I'm going to pray. You know, she was pregnant. She's pregnant and she said she's been having complications. I said, oh, fine. You're going to pray and all that. I said, where is the father? He said, to be honest with you, I don't know the father. I just had something with somebody at a club and that's it. I don't even know which of them. How would that kind of child feel when, he's, when, he, when, he, when, he, when he grew up and when he become a Christian? Who's your father? I don't know. Go ask your mom. My mom said, she doesn't know my father. You have to tell me, how would you feel if you're a Christian? Oh, God has forgiven you. You're born again. I know I'm born again, but I don't have a father. Not that I don't have a father. My mom don't know my father. Anyone that might be living such a confused life tonight, God will separate you unto himself right now. Now, that amen can be better. Can you shout the loudest amen? Yeah. Look at where Abraham was coming from. Joshua chapter 24 verse 2. I want to be fast tonight. Look at where he was coming from. And Joshua said unto all people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers, Joshua chapter 24 verse 2, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Neo, and they served what? Talk to me, children of God. They served what? So Abraham came from a lineage where they serve idols. Did you get it? But God called Abraham out of that. Beautiful. Lakes, please come. Hurry up. See, stay there. You're rushing. Stay there. Sit back down. This was what happened. Lakes, come. That's how God wants to separate you. Go back, sir. There is a call of God upon you tonight. Abraham was not the holy child. But God, in his mercy, called him out from serving all the gods. I told you, you are not supposed to be here. You are here because you have the call of God upon your life. Clap your hands and give God praise. That's Abraham. I have so, so many things I could say about that, but I don't want to say because, because of our time. Look at the story of these two ladies, Ruth and Naomi. I think I mentioned he, yesterday, them, there were three women, Naomi, Ruth, and Hopper, but God separated one out of the two. Her name, her name was Ruth. God is still separating because of refiner's fire. God is still in the business of separating because of refiner's fire. Separate. Look what happened to Matt, in Matthew 25 and 32. When you are, when you have sheep and goat, Jesus said, because if you see, that will be red. Jesus said, you have to separate. That was why it's in red. If it's in red, what does it mean? Read it, everybody. And before him shall be gathered. How many nations? What about Americans? 
Europeans, Africans, Indians, Asians, Asians, and Isha. One from as a sheep divided what? From what? When God separate, you will not be in the good class. You will not be in the class of goats. Number two, we separate from the womb. Separated from the womb. Separated from the womb. It means, that means when we are born again, there is a separation that goes on when we are born again. Separated. When we are born again. Some are born unto stuff. Separated from the womb. Look at what it says in, in uh, Genesis chapter 25 verse 23. Separation from the womb. It's not all of us that are born again that you are born again into stuff. Some, when you are born again, God just make yours to be special. There's a kind of understanding. There's a kind of revelation. There's a kind of separation that happens. You see, when you, cons when you compare yourself with others, we're not comparing. You realize, you realize your own your own salvation is authentic, original. You are going for the real thing. You are honest with yourself. Look at what happened here. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Thank you, sir. Two manner of people shall be separated. What? From thy bowels. Separation is going on. God is separating. God is separating. Now, there is this place called Tishbite. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Tishbite. In Tishbite, there is one person that God has to separate. God separated one person from Tishbite. Elijah the Tishbite. Elijah the Tishbite. God separated him. I see God separating someone tonight. I see God separating someone tonight. Yeah. Drinking. No, I'm separated unto God. No, I'm separated unto God. Yeah. All those things that, you, that people do. No, not me. Mine is different. I'm separated unto God. Abraham, I just told him. Now, when you look at the story of David, David was not the only child. The father has eight children. But there's something that God has seen about David that make God to say, you know one thing? I'm going to separate you out of all the children that your father had. And God separated David. He was not the firstborn. He was not the only boy. But God just separated him because he was going through refiner's fire. That's the process. I want to prophesy over one person in this room. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Among everyone that bear your name. That you come from the same womb. You will be the one separated unto God. Your amen can be loudest. That's why you are here. That's why you are here. Jacob was separated from the womb. Moses was not the firstborn. Moses was the lastborn. Why is it God cannot call Miriam the first child? Aaron the second child. Why was it that God... As to call Moses separation. Separation. Luke chapter 6 verse 22. Bless are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company. And shall reproach you. And cast out your name as evil. For the son of man's sake. Have you experienced separation in your room? Have you experienced separation in your family? Have you experienced separation among your friends? You got to wake up, stop sleeping because it's kind of dark and you are bending your head thinking I didn't see you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you because you're almost sleeping and you have long hair so you use your hair to cover your face as if you're reading the Bible. God knows your number. Among those who will sleep tonight, may you be separated unto God. May your eyes be open in the name of Jesus. There are so many things we are hearing all around us in the world. Oh, he does this, he did that, but not you, because you are separated unto God. It will not happen to you. 
If 17 is used to die and they were rebellious, you will be obedient in the name of Jesus. If by the time girls are 16 and they've lost their virginity, that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. If young men used to talk back to their father and curse their parents, that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. If American children, they're always failing and they are always independent from God, that will not be your portion. <laughs> refiner's fire. Refiner's fire. Refiner's fire. Separate. When you separate yourself unto God, your folks might not like you again because you don't drink again. You don't lie again. You don't fornicate again. You don't party again. You don't deceive again. So they will separate you from their company to prove that you are blessed. I want the blessed one in this room to shout the loudest hallelujah. You are not crazy. You are not out of your mind. You are not stupid. The only thing that is happening to you is that you are blessed. Clap your hands, blessed one. Separation. Separation. I have a story there about Jehoshaphat and Ahab. I can't tell it. Let's go to number three. Separate unto special blessings. You realize Joseph was different. So in 100% triumph, we have a statement or something or a hold we call, if you are not different, then you are not what? Period. period. Some say period. period. You're going to be different. It's not something you talk. It's something you are. Look at what happened here. In Genesis 49 verse 26, the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the almost band of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph. There is a blessing on your head. You hear what I said? There is a blessing on your head. Before you graduate, a blessed job is waiting. Direct entry to medical school, to law school. Your IT job, working in Google, is already released to you now. Every student loan is paid off now. You will never be put to shame again. It does not matter. Let your neighbor be laughing. Let your neighbor think you are crazy. You are separated unto God. The blessing that proves that you are separated will follow you tonight in the name of Jesus. sins of thy father is on the head of Joseph on the crown of the head of him that was separate what so Judah was sleeping around real Ben started sleeping with his father's girlfriend do you know that Levi and Simeon they were engulfed with anger things were going on but Joseph said no what others are doing, I won't do it. So you can know somebody that will be a prime minister, that will be a mayor, that will be a senator, that will be an IT guru, there will be a founder, there will be someone that will discover great things. You will know somebody that is great. How will you know from the life they are living now? They are separated unto God. They are separated unto prayer. They are separated unto praises. They are separated unto holiness. They are separated unto God. We are the separated one. Shout hallelujah. You don't need to look far 
to see great leaders of tomorrow. You don't need to look far to see those that we humble our dear sister, Oprah Winfrey. Some of the girls are shouting, amen. There are bros in this room who don't tell lies, who don't fornicate, who don't drink. They are separated unto God and they will humble in your mosque in the name of Jesus. Shout the loudest, amen. How did we know that? Look at Joseph, Genesis 37 verse 2. And please, let's point something out there. Please help me read it, everybody. Let's go. These are the generations. Not all of us are reading. Let's go. These are the generations of Joseph, Jacob. Joseph, be. Stop there. How old are you? How old are you now? You are 19. You are 23. This dude was just 17. See what he was doing at 17 years old. What was he doing? He was feeding the flock, which is what? And the lad was with the sons of what? Bilhar. And with the sons of what? Zilpha, his father's wife. And what? Joseph brought unto his father there. You can't be reporting the evil that your brothers are doing. And you are part of that evil. He was the only one not doing evil. What age? From today, you will be running away from evil. Sir, at this age, we can know who will be the prime minister. The only guy that was not doing evil. He was in nonentity here at the age of 17. He was a trash. He was a stupid boy. But leave me with my stupidity. I'll follow God. I'll serve God. I'll be committed to God. Leave me with my stupidity. Y'all can be doing that. I will separate myself unto Jesus. How many people will separate themselves unto Jesus? Shout Jesus! Look at him here. Look at him. Joseph, 17 years old. 17 years old. Faithful to God. Number four. We have separation of Nazarene. When you read Numbers chapter 6, you read from verse 1 through verse 8. You will see that every Nazarene must be separated unto God. Every Nazarene. That was what was told Samson. Nazarene, they don't cut off their hair. Their hair has to grow long. They don't drink wine. And there's some other characteristics that they have. Because they are Nazarene. That was why when Samson was separated unto God, the day he cut off his hair, his glory departed. Your glory will not depart. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Your glory will not depart. Yeah. There is a people called Levite. Number five. Levite are special people that want to serve God. They are from the tribe of Levi. Numbers chapter 8 verse 14. Doors shut thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel and the Levites shall be mine. I wish God can mention your name and said Titus, you are mine. Vera, you are mine. Um, all kinds of names. Clarence, you are mine. You know, all kinds of names. God just begin to mention your name and say Beatrice, you are mine. Shalom, you are mine. Sharon, you are mine. Imagine when God says you are mine. That means anybody that touch you, I'll kill them. Anyone that mess with you, I'll destroy them. Because you belong to me. Out of all the sons of, of Jacob, God says, Levite, you are separated unto me and you are mine. Why can't, let, why can't you let God say that about you tonight? That you belong to him. Please. Special people. For special things. When God says, do you know that you are very special to me? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. I want us to read it. God says, you are very special to me. You can't be like others. You can't die their death. 
you can't go the way to go. No, you cannot miss it the way they do. Now look at it. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. I want all of us to please read it with focus. I'm going to random very shortly. Look at what it says. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's what God wants you to be. And number six, you separate from those whom God will destroy. Anyone that God will destroy, don't hang out with them. Numbers chapter 16 verse 21. Separate yourself from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. I'm begging you, don't hang out with those God will destroy. You separate yourself for transformation. God has to transform you. Look at human beings. Look at what they change to. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 8. Look at how human beings can change. This is separation. The second process of refining. And of the Gadites. They are separated themselves unto what? David. Follow me please. Into the whole to the wilderness. Men of what? Men of what? War. Fit for the what? The battle. That could hold, that could handle shield and buckler. Whose faces were what? You are looking at a man and you are saying lion. Because they separate themselves unto the lion of the tribe of Judah. And were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Wow. Beautiful. Number seven. You separate yourself from sin and from sinners. You separate yourself from sin. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26. For such an high priest became us who is holy. One, harmless two, undefiled three, separate from sinners. Please, I don't write the Bible. Separate from what? Separate from sinners. A young man came, I met him here in Baltimore. I was driving, and I want to buy gas. Just around the corner for this area. I stopped, I want to buy gas some years back. And he came to me, and he said, sir, sir, sir. I said, hey, what's up, dog? I want to pretend as if I don't understand. He said, sir, you must be in Nigeria. I said, what are you talking about? I said, what, what's going on with you? Why you come in Nigeria? I don't know what you're talking about. He said, sir, please, sir, please don't do this. I said, uh, you were just talking to me like, sir, sir. I said, what? And I'll change. I said, okay, so what's going on with you? He said, okay. I said, when I see you, I say you are in Nigeria. I said, okay. He said, sir, I mean, a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, please, can you help me? I said, help you for what? He said, I came visiting my friend here in Baltimore. I came from Chicago. I'm an MBA person. I'm studying MBA, and I'm going to be finishing in May. It's around this time, April. He said, I'm going to be finishing. A job was waiting for me, everything. But there was a problem. I didn't know these guys are doing drugs. And they all left. And suddenly, some cops came to the house. I was the only one. And they really broke the door. Like, they broke everything. And they asked for these guys. They can't find them. And they found me. And they searched the room. And they find drugs. And I was charged to court. I don't have a parent there. I'm a student. I'm an international student. I don't know anybody. And... I think they tie something to his, to, his, to, his, to his one of his legs to monitor him. He said, I just need help. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going to court a week after. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Honestly, I know nothing about this. I'm just walking with the wrong crowd. I don't know what happened to him because I don't know how to help him. Separate from sinners. Second Corinthians chapter 6, look at it. I'll give one more point. We're done. Praise the Lord. Amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. Amen. Separate from sinners. Look at what scripture says. Second Corinthians chapter 6, we begin to read from verse 14. Are you in town? Yes, Be not unequally yoked together. With what? No, you're not talking to me. With what? Stop acting as if you know it. Those who doesn't believe, you believe God can heal you. 
You believe when is the right time, he will give you everything you need. You, need, you believe God is your helper. You believe God. Someone say, I believe God. You believe God is going to help you. You believe you're going to pass your inklex. You're going to pa pass your medical exam. You're going to pass your board exam. You believe it. God is going to do it. God is going to do it for you. Believe. Don't walk with those who doesn't believe. Period. There are people who doesn't believe in your dream. They don't believe in your existence. They don't believe in your God. They don't believe in your hallelujah. They don't believe in your amen. They don't believe in your consecration. They don't believe in what you're doing. My Bible says to you and to me, don't be yoked to them. What does it mean to be unequally yoked? It means that you are mixing egg white and, and the yolk, the albumin and the yolk, and you squash it together. Can you ever separate them again? Sorry, there are people that when you begin to walk together with unbelievers, you become one like them. When they die, they will die. When they are in jail, they will be in jail. Any bad thing that happens to them will happen to that person. I want to say, pray for you in the name of Jesus. The evil that has been packaged for unbelievers will not be traceable to your destiny. Now, you better shout the loudest, Amen. When God is talking to you, how do you feel? When God tells you from the Bible, why are you struggling with this? He said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness? You are standing, you are misrighteousness. You are Mr. Righteousness. You are Mr. Righteousness. What are you doing with Mr. or Mrs. Unrighteousness? Mr. Unrighteousness are your friends and your bodies on your phone. You check your phone. Let me look at all your contacts. Majority of them are Mrs. or Miss or dude or sister. What the name? Unrighteousness. When you talk prayer, they talk sex. When you talk fasting, they talk party. And God knows you have a good heart. But the demon spirit in, in them is always overwhelming your good intentions and character. And you are always succumbing to them. They're corrupting you. What fellowship? How can you talk to them? How can you relate to them? How can you fellowship with them? Two fellows in the same ship. They know your secret. They know your details. They know your plans. They know everything about you. They even know what you wear. They know how much you buy. They know where you bought it from. They know the food. You, everything about your life, they know it. God says, don't let it happen. What communion at light with darkness? How can light and darkness be friends? They can be together. And look at what it says. And in that regard, let's turn on the light. I said, no, 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 sorry. I think it's, it's helpful for the screen, isn't it? We're not in darkness. Someone is watching me, but really, don't, don't turn on because we need it for the screen. Thank you, sir. Now, look at it. I mean, we have light in the front. I just want to see clearly at the back so that somebody hearing me can, cannot be saying, ah, they are even dwelling in darkness. We're not sons and daughters of darkness. Now, sons and daughters of light, shout Hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 15, look at what it says. Verse 15. And what agreement with Christ with Belial? What was it that God called unrighteousness? Belial. What is Belial? Belial means devil. It means demon. If they give you the picture of Belial, what it looks like, it will be very horrifying. Like a dragon. Look at what it says. What part has he that believeth with an infidel? Verse 16. Verse 16, let's go. Don't give me any picture. Don't look at things like that. Let's go to verse 16. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. You 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 are the temple of the living God. The finest fire has started. You are the temple of the living God. temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. You 
you are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. God wants to dwell in you. Young lady, God wants to dwell in you. I will dwell in them. So you will receive supernatural strength. You will receive prosperity. The Lord just spoke to me right now. There is somebody here, and I think he's talking about me. And if you want to join me, you can say amen. He said, you will be more wealthy than a country. I receive that in the name of Jesus. Did you hear the prophecy? He said, I shall be more wealthy than what? Clap your hands and receive it. I will dwell in them and I will walk in them. Sir, can you come to the front, please? Yes, walk down. Just walk slowly, sir. Yeah. You see, as he walks to me, who's walking? He's not the one walking. If he's a Christian and he's born again, who's walking towards me? God. Go back, sir. Why are you not clapping? Why are you not clapping? You're still sizing him up. That's not the room. We don't have room for all this nonsense. Those things are over because we are refined by fire. When the young man was walking towards me, who, if he's a Christian, I believe, and he was serving God, and he's prepared, and he's separated unto God, who's walking towards me? He's bringing God to me. That's how you are going to bring God to your school. You will bring God to your family. You will bring God to Baltimore. You will bring God to D.C. You will bring God to London. Everywhere you go, you will be bringing God there. This is a very serious issue. This is a very serious meeting. Where demons are pressing and messing with your family. They killed your father and they say your mother is next. You can just visit and bring God there. And when God shows up, anyone that plan to silence you, Almighty God will silence them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. I want you to take note of a statement here. State of the statement of I will. I what? I. I. Who is the I? Can he do it? Is God intimidated? God is scared? God is not powerful? God is paralyzed? God will lie? God will disappoint? Everything God will do in your life, in your life, is considered done right now. I will shine in them. I will prosper them. I will move them forward. I will get them jobs. I will make them to be in leadership position. I will give them money. I will get them married. I will give them children. I will give them wisdom. I will give them knowledge. I will heal their sickness. I will deliver them. Shout hallelujah. It's going to be well with you. The devil just lie. I said, it's going to be well with you. I said, it's going to be well with you. I don't care what the devil says to you. It's going to be well with you. Now, if a government said, I will do it, I'll pay it, they might fail. Democrat can fail. Republican can fail. You know, your friend can fail. They can die. They can have an accident. But God cannot fail. God cannot lie. God cannot disappoint. God cannot be late. God is always here. God is on your side. Shout hallelujah. Take note of that. I will dwell in them. It's like God is beating his chest. I will dwell with them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. And they shall be my. So what do we do? Look at the next verse. That's why it's very important. Wherefore. Let's. Come up from among them. You gotta run out man. That's what you do. 
for what you do. Go back, sir. Let the jet fuels come out. Out of what? Crude oil. Let the gasoline what? From what? Did you get what I'm saying? It's already prepared. Now it's getting what? Separated. It, it, was, a, it was a mess. But when you realize you are dwelling among idolatrous, rebellious, disobedient kind of Christian. Not all Christians are Christians. Not all those who say hallelujah are saying hallelujah from the depth of their life. Not all those who say Jesus is Lord are saying are righteous. God says if you notice this kind of people, the holy thing to show and to prove that you belong to God is not to say you will change them. They will wreck you. They will suffocate you. They will cause you to die. What do you do? Separate. Let's all read it. Go. Wherefore, come up from among them and be ye separate, say the Lord, and touch no the authority. The problem is we don't like to live a lonely life. And the devil makes sure that he's surrounding us right now with unknown friends who are following us online. We don't know these people. We just realize suddenly you have 1.2 million, 1.2 million views. And they are always suggesting to you. They are always speaking their minds. And you are always believing them. You don't even believe who God says you are. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Say it, your friend. Say it, your buddy. Why can't you obey God? Why? Among the drunkards, among the clubbers, wherefore, come out. What? From among them. And be ye what? Say who? Among the one that are giving their body to ephemism and sex and immoral act. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye what? Say it what? Even in this gathering, if you know somebody in this gathering who is head bent on living their sinful life, wherefore, come out from among them and be separate. Say what? Don't listen to all those false preachers that said you are going to be alone. They are false teachers of the last days. They are doomed for damnation. They are falsely teaching you heresy. Say it, the Lord is what you should look for. Not say it, a man of God. Say it, the Lord is what you look for. It's not say it, the prophet. Say it, the Lord is what you should look for. Not say it, father in the Lord. Not say it, mother in the Lord. Yes, God will speak to father in the Lord and mother in the Lord. As long as mother and father in the Lord, they are emphasizing what God says. Clap your hands. Somebody must be teaching you something different. Don't listen to them. Always listen to say it the Lord. Clap your hands. To be intent that if something is unclean, what is it because they don't do? You can't touch a money that doesn't belong to you. It's not a blessing. It's not yours. That is pilfering. That is stealing. It, it, it doesn't. It's not yours. Shoes not yours. You are sharing chain and jewelry with somebody that is a cultist. You are changing wigs. Sharing wigs with a witch. And you started having nightmares. Please, I have a party, and I'm begging you, my friend, can I share your wig? Can you borrow me your wig? And all the curses that was on the head of that girl comes on you. You are a dignified, glorious person. The day you put on the wig, your glory goes to the one who has the wig, and the curse of the person that has the wig comes on your head. I cancel that for you now! Shout the loudest, Amen! 
touching off the unclean thing. You are touching pornography. You are typing it. Pornography site cannot type itself, can it? It cannot even, Siri cannot do it except you speak to Siri, isn't it? There is no way you enter the room and when you enter, Siri say, you don't press anything on your phone. And Siri says, today I'm going to punch pornography for you. Can it do it? You have to be the one saying, Siri, I want to watch what? Yeah. The way you say it is one kind. See me in church tomorrow. By God's mercy and grace, clap your hands. <laughs> Someone hear what I'm saying? To the intent of no what? Touching. No, talk to me. To the intent of no what? Ah, and you are typing it on your computer, on your phone. You type it. You know the site. You look around. It's around 1 a.m. You went to the bathroom and you are feeling one way. You said, this is my habit. And you type it. 2 a.m. You alone and demons. And God says, mm, back off. In Jamaica, don't give her that job. No, delay seven years. No, this one is not separated. This one is unclean. So you, when you touch unclean things, you become unclean. God cannot touch you. Did you get it? When you touch unclean, you become what? So God cannot what? He can touch your sickness. He can touch your disease. He can touch your malady. He can touch your problem. Today, before you leave this room, you will receive the touch of God. And I will receive you. God want to receive you. God wants to make you his responsibility. So what was it God said in verse 18? Look at what it says in verse 18. I love verse 18 because he said it will be your God. You peace people. Is there verse 18 there? Yes. Let's go. And I will be what? And you shall be what? Say the word. Clap your hands. Rise up on your feet. I told you I'll make it brief. Jeremiah 37 verse 12. Separate unto God. That's what I want to do. Among those who will have cancer, you will not be there. Among those who will be going for chemo every week, you will not be there. Among those who by the time they are 25, they are 30, they are dead, you will not be there. Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of what? I'm leaving Jerusalem. I'm going to the Benjamite. For what? In the midst of what? Separate. Separate. There's the first separation we all had. The first separation is to separate ourselves from worldliness from worldly people that's the first one the second one is to separate ourselves from sinful Christians from what sinful yeah sinful Christians we may all be dancing with a good heart but there are some people that might be dancing and the way they are dancing or their motive of dancing is different from ours I can hang out with those people that we finish a meeting like this the way they are discussing. Their discussion is kind of weird. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they are coming. They begin to ask for your phone number. After such a powerful meeting like this. What do you want to use my phone number for? What do you want to use my Instagram page for? You already know me. I'm a Christian. If you want to evangelize, go and reach out to people who are not born again. Except for something else, which is maybe marriage at the right time. And we follow the right the due process. You don't need any of those. If it's a girl to a girl, fine. You want to encourage me, a boy to a boy. But why a boy and a girl? And after we finish this meeting, you want to block me out there at the gate and you want to talk to me around what time? 11, 15 p.m. For what? Why are you calling me around 1 a.m.? Why do you ask me to send you my nude pictures and you send yours to me? 
to separate myself from people like that. And you say you are a Christian? No, this is not a matter of you don't know what you're doing, or maybe you're out of your mind, or you forgot, or maybe you're crazy. I got a what? Oh, no, you got to talk to me now. I got a what? You're scary, man. You scare me. I, I have to separate myself from you. I know you call yourself a bro or a sister. I got to separate myself to you. We are sisters. We are together. We're in a car and there is a red light and you started putting your hand in my lap. A sister to a sister? And you say you're just waking up from dream? What do I need to do? No, you're not talking to me and I really don't know why you... What do I need to do? If you have a child, can you let anybody touch your child, your seven-year-old that way? The person we go to where? Jail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is there something? Are you getting what I'm saying? You gotta separate yourself from folk. You gotta separate yourself from folk. Tomorrow we're going to have a lot of public gatherings. We call it church. People we gather. It's not everybody that is gathering that is a Christian. You have to learn how to separate yourself. Now, when you separate yourself from Christians, it doesn't mean you live a life of aloof. You just know, I don't do that. I don't go there. I don't hear there. I don't drink their stuff. He said, they might call you crazy, but you are what? Blessed. Didn't I show you that? Did I show you that? You are becoming, you this girl, you this dude, you started acting like who? Joseph. You started acting like Ruth. It will cost you because diesel fuel, I'm sorry, um, jet fuel is coming out. Diesel is coming out. It's going to cost you. It's gonna, you might lose some popularity. You might lose some friends. Mockery can set in. Did it happen to Joseph? But finally, these same people we bow down for you. Clap your hands. Now listen to me. Listen to me, guys. We were 12 in the house. How many of us? 12 boys. And one day, something funny happened. I was there on the throne. I had a dream. I saw 11 folk, 11 of my brothers, they were literally bowing down for me. I made a mistake to tell them that y'all bow for me and they hated me because I separated myself. And look at that separation. I didn't grow with them. They cast me into the pit. They were having fun. They were enjoying themselves. Things were happening. Every Friday they were having good time. I wasn't there with them. Are you getting what I'm saying? For 30 years, I never see my brothers. I was what? Separated from them unto God. Not knowing I'm on my way to victory. I'm on my way to triumph. I'm on my way to ruling. I, I, I did not even know. No, no, no. Me, myself, I don't even know. I thought I can't make it in life. I thought I would never even shine. There was a time when I was hanging out with some people you know, um, tribal people because I want to preach gospel to them so I have to learn their language and learn everything about them and I sold everything that I have so we can build churches for them, church buildings and I, and I had just uh, bathroom slippers with me I've sold everything, maybe I have two cloth and you know that time I thought this is the way I'm going to live I can't prosper this is the end of my life and I agree as a boy, that's just your cross, I never know that God can even, you know, just begin to try to say, maybe I'll bless you. I didn't know. You know what happened one day? Joseph was sitting here on the throne. Give me a chair, please. He sat down on the throne and he was administering. Okay? Well, I might not have to sit on any chair, but any chair that I sit on will be anointed. So don't let me sit on any chair. If I sit on any chair tonight, there will be power on it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. So I can't do that here. There was so much power on that chair that anybody that sits on that chair, you will receive a 24 hour breakthrough. I mean, you say amen, but I'm not going to sit on it. The one that sat down here, if you know it, you can catch it, but I don't, I don't know, you can't get it. It's not for public anymore. No, it's not for public. If 
you sit on the chair I sat I tell you something except God didn't call me if you sit there on anything you need less than 24 hours my God will give it to you so Joseph sat down and one day 10 boys came inside and they saw him but they did not recognize him refiner's fire how can we be playing basketball together we grow from the same family we head from the same port for 70 years and you all came and you cannot recognize me Joseph has changed but Joseph recognized what? when you have a dream when your dream is fulfilled those who stand against you will not recognize you but you will what? So Joseph sat on the tree on the seat and he watched it. He's now a seal somewhere there in Nottrum Garment or somewhere. He has really moved high up. It's in money, it's in business. And his brothers came in and they thought he was the governor of the land. And the first thing they did was to what? And when Joseph saw them bow, he said, Excuse me. I need to go into the bathroom can I get some napkins and he went to the bathroom uh, Jesus what kind of tears God you are faithful what you showed me that day I do not know how it can come to pass my brothers who are older than me who had fun, who bought their cars, who have their own jobs, when I was a nobody, when I thought I can never make it, my very own brothers, when I consecrate myself, when I prepare myself, when I separated myself, they came to the room without knowing me, the powder. You are faithful. You are too faithful to fail me. Oh Jesus. You are too faithful to disappoint me. Hey! You prove yourself in my life. And I come to realize. Listen, it is the volume. Now, can you give me a napkin? I need to go back. I need to go back. I need to go back. Okay, what's going on here? He was pretending. And they bowed down what? Okay. God is faithful. Listen, everybody has their own side of God. I told my wife, I said, my own side of God. If you tell me, somebody love God is holy. I love it too. But me, if I want to tell you who my father is, God to me is what? He's too faithful. He's too faithful. He's too faithful. Young man is a faithful God. He took me out of accident. I was left dead. They were taking me to the morgue. When life showed up. No surgery. The windscreen broke. The bumper dented. They dragged me on the floor like, like a barbecue, barbecue meat. Blood on the ground. Left dead. And in that situation, I had steps left, right, left, right, left. I was seeing their boots, those are angels. And I had somebody said, We will send them back because it will be an 
instrument of blessing to his generation and to generations to come. We are not joking here. What has God told you? What is it that God told me to prophesy into your life? I don't care what the devil says. It's going to come to pass. 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 Shout hallelujah. Joseph was not crying. Reduce the volume. Joseph was not crying because he was emotional. He was just saying, God, ah, God, I lost my mother. I thought it's over. Family divorced. I thought it's over. I was jobless for three years. I thought it's over. I even get messed up along the way. I messed my life up. I thought it's over friends forsook me. I thought it's over. I don't have anybody. I thought it's over. But one way or the other, he brought me into dominion. He brought me to dominion. And he says a program called Refiner's Fire to refire my hope. Because I was almost losing hope in God. I thought I'm alone. I thought it's over. They condemned me. They forsook me. But it brought me to this program to refire my hope. To let me know that men may forsake me, but God will never forsake me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Give me the scripture. Let's go. Let's go. You're talking to him. You're distracting him. You're distracting him. You're distracting him. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews, please. Your dream is true. Your dream is true. Your dream is true. I want us to sing and worship him tonight, but before we do that, before we do that, listen, can, can, can you reduce that thing, please? Because I don't want people to be distracted. Now, listen, are you going to play it again? Because I love it. Now, I want you to give your life to Jesus. I can't make it without Jesus. I use my teeth to bite an high voltage cable. I did not know. It blew my teeth. My teeth did not break. And it lifted me up and knocked me to the ground. And I just stood up. This God is too faithful to me. I was two years old and this is inside the veranda. And my father fired our house help and said, I'm going to come and pay you your last son. Because it was misbe she wasn't misbehaving. And my father said, when I come back from work, I'll pay you off. You can just go. And you know what she did? She took me to this other side. And there are things. And I held the mirror thing here. And she did that for how many hours? I didn't know. My father left work. Something says. What is the something? Thank you. We don't say something anymore. But my father says something. Something says go home now. He was supposed to be home at 4. He left his work at 9, 8, 9 10 a.m. Somewhere like that. Before noon. And when he, when he left... He saw me hanging in there, a under two year old boy, and he started tiptoeing because I must not get an eye contact with him. What do you think will happen? I'll fall down until he was able to go through the back of the house, open the door, and use his hand to pick me up from there. Maybe the house had thought that would be my end, but God kept me. Thank you, sir. Read the scripture. Look at what it says. Stop there. Why are you covetous? Why are you, why are you jealous of your friend? What is the name of the car they have right now? It doesn't matter. 
you're not only going to have a car you will have you'll be selling cars don't be covetous your time will come it doesn't matter what they say to discredit you they'll say things about you they will knock you down because they are jealous don't worry separate yourself separate yourself separate yourself and look at it he said and be content with such things be what who talk to me be what if you have one shoe be content if you have one watch be content be content with your shape the shape of your body be content with your life they'll tell you don't have a car they'll tell you don't have things they'll tell you why can't you hang out with some of the guys there's a, there, there are people here that the mother is the one that is saying the, the mother organized a um, what do you call is it sugar daddy the mother of the girl one of my daughter in the law she's not been here our mother organized a sugar daddy for her and her mother was cursing her for not dating a because her mother needed money they live somewhere there in somewhere in america be content why for he has said what no i will sometimes leave you mm -mm -mm -mm. i will for two months leave you now what do you know that everybody in this room god is by your side you didn't hear what he said what is it that god said to you no he says sometimes you know the you know the definition of never you know the meaning of never i will never what so when you think god has forsaken you he's by your side i don't like you telling me you feel like you are forsaken i really don't like it i will never leave you nor forsake you lord jesus i just want to give my life to jesus tonight i've been playing games even the one i did i wasn't serious about it now i want to be serious come to the front i want to pray for you you're going to sing that song again to all of me you're going to play that song again and focus out to flow with you come to the front i want to pray for you hurry up hurry up i'm waiting for you the meeting is closed it's closed you gotta come quickly i want this thing to be original guys i want to originally and intentionally surrender my life to jesus tonight i'm out of all the things i'm i'm, I'm out i'm out tonight is my night i'm waiting for you guys you gotta hurry up sincerity honestly i'm separating myself from stuff i'm separating myself from stuff Madula maga Doskapa. god bless those who are clapping god bless those who are clapping god bless those anybody else anybody else we're waiting clap your hands somebody Anybody else want to do this? Anybody else want to? This, this is this is your hour. This is your hour. Separate yourself. Separate yourself from worldliness. Separate yourself from sin. Come to the front. Separate yourself. Refining has started. Separate yourself. Separate yourself. Separate yourself. Where are you? Come. Join this glorious people. God bless those who are clapping. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Jet fuels, fuel oil, gasoline, diesel, petroleum products. God wants to separate tonight. Everybody in front, say this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Son of David, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Tonight, I separate myself from the word unto you. Receive me, my savior, my deliverer. I am born again. For the rest of my life, I will serve you. The dream of God for my life is true. It can never lie. I believe it. I believe it. It's already so. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy Spirit, what I cannot do in the life of these children, please do it. Make their salvation permanent. Thank you for touching them with your fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands, go back. Let everyone stand up.
Tonight is a night where we just worship and we just go back. Now listen, folk, listen to me. You need to be anointed. Don't miss tomorrow. The anointing service we have during our breakthrough service is between 12.30 and 2.30. We will endeavor by his mercy to keep to time. I got some things I want to do after by God's mercy and grace. I have some I have recordings I want to do in the building. So we have to be in a hurry and get everybody out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will make sure and help you to be there. Amen. I can't hear your loudest amen. amen. Okay, the song you're singing, let's go and then let the brother flow with it and then we're going to have a good time. Let's just sing that song. We sing a couple of times. Now, let's sing that song and just wash it. Now listen, you know why we're doing what we're doing? Because we are separated unto God. We are separated unto who? Unto God. Now, let's do that and then we'll, we'll be out of this building shortly. Let's go. Yes. song are you trying to sing in it? Did you don't know the song he's trying to sing? We have to be the one to sing then in few with us. Let's go please. Emperor of the universe Master of the sea Clap your hands for them together. Be back.
information and follow you are not following me you are following Jesus don't follow me follow Jesus did you get the information for you and also all the other social media platform you do that now how many people uh, are on uh, I don't even know what platform do you re you receive our music from Sound. Any beast that might be 
Swallow my head. You remember what I did for the lady? She can't swallow it. 